You're listening to What's That Sound with your host, Stu Watts. Well, welcome to another episode of What's That Sound podcast. My name's Stu Watts. Um, Today I've got Nicholas DiLorenzo with me once again. Uh, This is going to be the first of uh, one of our episodes where we deep dive a bit into a specific topic um, and it just allows us to answer some of the questions that people have been sending through um, and just kind of get more nitty gritty into into specifics. So I'm looking forward to it. Nick, thanks for joining me, man. No, this is going to be fun. This is a bit more (laughs) free, free freeballing. Yeah, 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 that's it and get through some content so That's yeah it. nice one man well um yeah first of all the topic so today's topic is about how to be efficient in the mix process and we're going to go through things like setting up how to request stems from your clients things like that as well as during the mix process what that looks like and uh also you know delivery of of uh the mixes to your clients and you know getting uh feedback on your mixes and all that sort of stuff so Bit of a deep dive into the mix process, how we can be quicker at that sort of thing. So let's kick off, man. So yeah, yeah first of all, setting up. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's one of those things where I think um, a lot of thought needs to go into it and it generally doesn't for people that are just starting out. They kind of just open up a session, bring files in and, and just start mixing. What are your thoughts on that? Like do you, do you, do you notice that? Yeah, I think, I think there's like – a bit of clarity, which has to like be people aren't clear on what the mixing process is. So they're like, Oh, we went and recorded Mm. at this rehearsal space and we have these files. And if we send it to somebody, they'll be able to make it sound like a professional Yeah, and that's it. So they just like, there's just just like this, it's like a black box. It's like, (laughs) we know that our mixing engineer, if we send the files there, this is is the, this is the um, perception. We just, send them there, we don't know what door it's in or if it's a session yeah. file, if it's a stems or if they're consolidated, that the mixing engineer will somehow wrap this all up. and that's their job, pop right? That's, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that is, I reckon, like one of the big things which mixing engineers and, and, and artists as well need to like communicate on strongly. Yeah. So that yeah. way it's not like this crazy black box where they just throw things in and something comes out, but mixing engineers need to take the... Uh, responsibility to to listen to things before they book it and and artists have to take the care to understand how different engineers work so they provide them what they need. And that that also comes through with, you know, how you're communicating back and forth and it's totally okay. I think a lot of people have a fear of asking questions and, and just hoping that things will work out the way that they hope them to or, you know, not necessarily understanding. And like you said, the responsibility of the mix engineer is letting the client know, hey, I need these things done specific ways to ensure that, you know, it gets done quicker, it gets done, you know, with more accuracy, all those sorts of things. So, I mean, I've got a um, stem delivery document that I like to send through to my clients. Um, if, if I'm only on the mix, I mean, a lot of the time I'm start to finish recording production all the way through to mixing. Um, but if I'm not, and I'm just the mix engineer, then I have this document prepared that I can send through to people and it, it outlines a whole bunch of different things. So for me, that's how I like to work. And I've got it. I've got it written. If if it's not sent through the way that I've got it detailed in this document, I'll ask you to do it again. It's 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 because if it's wrong, it's like we, you're not allowing me to do my job the way that I need to to be able to do it. Yeah. No. That that's interesting. Yeah. And like, what what what's actually in the document though? Like, well, was, like, what would you consider is in the document that most people would have? Mm-hmm. And then what's in the document that you consider is maybe unique to yourself that other people wouldn't have come across? Mm. Um, well, I've got it here. So I'll just read out all of the headlines and okay. I won't go through necessarily yeah. the the exact text, but I've basically got please provide wet and dry stems. Okay. I've got on dry stems, please bypass effects except for vocal tuning. The reason for that is because generally speaking, artists have a very clear kind of picture in their head of how they want their vocals to be tuned unless they don't, in which case obviously I tune it. 
and they can communicate that to me. But a lot of the time I've found that people have a very, if especially if it's like hard auto tuning, then they like to have it specifically their, their way. So maybe that's specific to me, but maybe not. Okay. Um, consolidating tracks start to finish, um, yep. you know, want the same start and end time of all of the songs, uh, all of the tracks. I don't want, you know, a verse vocal to be out of place and me have to line it up, things yeah. like that. If you've got, you know, a whole bunch of similar um, vocal sounds, for exa- example, you want all of the verse and the chorus to sound the exact same way, put them on one track unless um, you've got multi-tracks as well. Then you've obviously got to have them separate. Um, for me, that's really important because I don't want to have to sort through 60 vocal tracks when they could be on, you know, five or 10. Okay. That's really important for me. Um, things like removing audible artifacts. Like I like to educate my clients on, you know, things like clicks and pops because a lot of the time it's when they're actually recording. They don't know that they need to do things like auto fades, um, stuff like that. Um, so that's an education piece for me and it actually allows them to, to get better quality recordings yeah. on the way in. Um, things like folder name and file name structure, um, you know, exporting in mono unless it's a stereo track. Um, that's important for me because uh, I don't need things in stereo unless they have stereo information like a, a stereo synth or anything like that. Um I mean, if it's, it's not a big deal if it's exported in stereo, but if it if 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 it doesn't have stereo information, then I don't need it in a stereo track. Yeah. It's not that's not one of the like main ones, but it's it's in there. Um, things like time signatures, rough mixes, reference tracks, things like that. I, I list all that sort of information. So that's that's a, a brief summary of the stuff that I've got. It's a lot of information, but again, it's an education thing as well for me. And it kind of gives you a little, it gives the client a little bit of a um, kind of, uh, it makes them think a little bit more about the quality of what they're giving to me. Hmm. And I think that's that's important for them because it's, yeah, again, an education thing. Out of all the times you send it out, mm-hmm. how many times do clients send it, give you the deliverables that you need correctly versus how many times do they miss things? Um, I'd say it's probably like 90%. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Do you reckon 90% it would be still 90% if you didn't give them that? Probably not. Okay. No, I don't think so. I just and, and I've built this over time. It's not like I set and forget. It's yeah. like I've noticed things over time so when I've gotten things delivered to me and they're, you know, done differently to how I like to have them. That's, you yeah, know, I've added things over time to to – Make this more. Can you email efficient. me that document? Yeah, yeah. But just email, I'm just curious because I'm just thinking. Right now, this, yeah, right now, just email it. Um, I'm really oh, curious yeah. because I can't remember where, where, where I watched it, but mm. um, someone was talking about the amount of friction you give your clients. Mm. Um, and systems are great. Mm-hmm. Now I'm I'm paraphrasing something I yep. heard somebody else say, but but system systems are great and. They're great to a, to a sense where it makes your process more efficient because that's mm-hmm. what we're talking about. But is it at the cost of somebody else doing more of the work? Go on. And that's what I want to. That's the point I want to get at because for oh, there you are um, for the client. Is there a more f- efficient and effective way to compartmentalize a lot of these steps? Mm. Like the first thing I, I thought of was um, the stereo mono. One. Yeah, the stereo monoizer. Yeah, so you could literally just go. Just I can take tell. that whole note yeah, out and yeah, then, yeah. like, they don't have to stress about it and then you just throw Complicates it in there. things, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Provide wet and dry stems. Well, we can talk about that, but on dry stems, bypass effects of, except for vocal tuning. Yeah. A- again, I'm, again, a lot of this stuff. Yeah, there's a lot here. I'm just, yeah. A lot of this stuff, again, is is to get them thinking about how they can be more, you know, professional with their approach to music as well. Yeah, like it's just something that if if we can all be better at what we do, then it makes everyone's job easier. And these things are things that you can't implement immediately necessarily. It takes time to practice, like things like you know crossfading and auto fades and stuff like that. But at the end, it's a better 
It's a better product. Who's sending you mixes though? Are they producers themselves or are they artists who are self-producing or? Um, usually it's producers. Yeah. Well, then in that sense, they should, they should have. They should. Shit. Like it's, it's, and if they haven't, well then, you know, like yeah. there's no saving them once that by the, by the <laughs> point they're, they're already in a career doing it. You can yeah. like sometimes. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm not trying to yeah, be yeah, hypercritical. Yeah. I'm just trying to look at it and be like, okay, this is, this is good mm. for the efficiency sake on your end, mm. but this is a, it's a great document. It's just. It's uh, long. Uh, it's long for, for somebody to like compartmentalize yeah. and actually be like, oh, I'm going to send Stu Stems. Hold on. Stop. I'm not going to send Stu Stems because <laughs> I'm going to go through the, the, this, this, this lengthy checklist. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm not mean to be, be critical. I'm just going like, you know, there's efficiency on both ends. It's like efficiency yeah. from us as engineers where we have to be efficient in our process mm. um, and effective as well, not, mm. not to skim over things. Mm-hmm. But then in the same respect, it's like, you know, Where's the trade off between our efficiency and ease of like access for the yeah, clients yeah. and keeping them focused on what they need to? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's super interesting. Mm. Uh, I, I'm actually happy I got you to read it out and email it to me because I'm like, <laughs> I know. think the 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 thing as a result of that is I do get. I mean, it's it's one thing that you really only need to read once or twice. If you know, and the the clients that I have that have sent me multiple multiple mixes, which are the people that I've been working with, they know now how exactly they need to do it. Um, and it is, it's, it's just, it's just making, yeah, the friction. I understand that it, it in the long term, it just makes things better yeah. to me. And I haven't had any negative feedback being like, I, yeah. can't, I can't be bothered reading this or anything like that. Oh, so, of course. No, yeah. no, it wouldn't be the feedback that would surface yeah. straight away. It's mm. just about playing those balances with systems. Like totally. Yeah. Where, where totally. it sort of crosses over. Uh, yeah. Because my, my sort of setup at the moment is I, I've, I touched on it in, in the previous podcast mm. and then that, that sort of like got a lot of people thinking mm-hmm. and like either being on one side or the other, I'm like, send it all wet mm-hmm. and double check. It plays back like the production mix mm-hmm. and that's it. Mm-hmm. So it's like if it plays back like the production mix, that's mm-hmm. what you signed off on. That's what I'm going to work from. Mm. And then, yeah, people come back and they're like, they're, they're artists that have been burned from mixing engineers where mm. they reproduce and they're like, yeah, we understand that. That's how they should do it. Then you've got engineers who are like, well, if you're going to send it to me, why bother sending it to me at all? Like yeah. what, 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 what yeah. work do I have left to do? And it's like, it's, it's like, well, okay, that's, should be something that happens preliminary that you could consult with them, figure out what they need to be done rather than assuming that you can get sent anything and then be like, oh, I'm going to make this magic because I'm so fucking good. Yeah. It's like, no, you're not that good because you need to listen to what your client totally. needs rather than just assuming, oh, you know, they can send me dry sims and I know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and for, for me, that's that's a great point, but it all focuses in on the communication before even yeah, doing the job. Spot on. And that is that is such a crucial part of our career, yeah. you know what I mean? And like when without, and it's just so many times that it happened in the past, whether it be recording or mixing, when you don't have those conversations, yeah. they're the times that things fall apart and you have a shit time for yeah. two or three days struggling to fix things that you could have eliminated or even, you know, as harsh as it seems, maybe they're not the right client for you because it's just, it, it, it's just, they're not, you're not on the same page. Yeah, well, I, I just think if if if, peop, if there are engineers out there that have their head up their ass that high that they feel like they can take anything and make it better, that's yeah, that's on them. They're always going to be disappointed when their clients don't like what they're doing. <laughs> um, but what I'm what I'm what I'm this is like a question I actually asked. Mm. I've asked some clients because they sent me mixes mm. and they sound better than mixes I've done. Mm. As in not mixes for that project, but they mm-hmm. sound. I'm like, why are you sending it to me to mix? This mm-hmm. sounds great, mm-hmm. you know. And they go, well, we feel this way about this thing and. Mm-hmm might be well we don't feel the drums are hitting as hard as they could or the bass is where and then you go oh okay well i never considered it like that but mm-hmm. yeah i can help you do that i i can help carry that along so mm-hmm. you know i'm not going to touch the vocals i'm not going to touch the guitar i'm just mm-hmm. going to help you connect with that one pain point yeah. and that's my job and i need to accept it i don't yeah. need to put a hundred plugins across everything to make this this you know because I've watched all these YouTube videos on how to do these techniques. Yeah. I need to use these techniques. No. Yeah. And I think it's uh, funny yeah. because I think like that's more of a producer mindset, in my opinion. Yeah, it it's is. like, you know, you you're a mixing engineer, you're getting things to sound good. 
you know, are you part of the production process? If the answer is no, then you don't have to do any of that stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, but you can, you can in, in, you can input, I think you can input new things, but I, anytime I do that, say if I put in like some simple thing, like a tape stop or, you know, something, you know, like a distorted delay or something that they didn't have initially in that mix, I will always tell them, I'll say, Hey, I did this on this section. Yeah. Tell me if you like it or not. <laughs> I'll take it off you if you don't yeah. like it. Yeah. And I've, and, and I work with Carl Barner, who's a mixing engineer and he does some really quirky stuff, but he always gives them an A and a B version. He's yeah. like, here's the version that we're working to. And this is this quirky sort of thing cool. I did with reamping this, this, this mm. snare on an amp and, you know, throwing it down the staircase or whatever, yeah. the, fuck, <laughs> whatever yeah. the hell he did for it. But yeah. he gives them that recourse to be like, okay, yeah. if you don't like this, tell me. And I respect that, but yeah. they don't, you know, you don't tie people's hands down to yeah. whatever is in your head because yeah um what do you think is like you know is there any specific like things that you've noticed that you've had to make quicker because you notice every single time they take long like a long period of time oh, what do I need to make quicker <laughs> to be honest I don't know yeah like, I've got I've got my temp like the template I work for yeah. which is I just look at it like a big SSL console mm. that has everything routed the way I like it that's yep. how I look at a template it's mm-hmm. not necessarily like I throw it in and I pump it out it's just like yeah. this is everything patched yeah. and routed the way I need it mm-hmm. um that's mm-hmm. probably like it's a big part a, of that's it a, that's, a, that's a huge that's amount a massive of time part of it um yeah, nothing specifically. Yeah, Other no, than that's that, cool. it's like, yeah, I got that set up and then that works and that's cool. But that's huge though, like something like having those templates set up. I mean, the the, the I, I like the idea of templates. I have found for myself in the way that I mix is it doesn't necessarily improve the speed of the way that I do things um, because I like to, I mean, I have... I have, uh, you know, plugin settings saved. I have okay. effects chains. That to me is my template okay. and I'll drag in, you know, effects chains that I've used on other, and this, this could work on this track and I'll just drag that in. Okay. That to me is my version of a template for routing and things like that. The amount of time that it takes me to do that in studio one is takes like a second. So, and I don't always, do things the same way yeah. because of the different styles of music that I work on. Okay. And I find that different styles of music require different mix approaches. How, how big is the CPU on this? Like, how- uh, I've got 16 gig of RAM. I've got... Uh, how many cores? Can tell you. One second. I'm just, I'm just curious. Quad core, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 2.8 gigahertz quad core, i7. Okay, interesting. Yeah. No, because um, the reason why I ask is... Because I'm so fucking arrogant the way my template is set up. I just have hundreds of channels. Yeah. I just have them all set up, all yeah. the buses done. I've yeah. got one for a short, a medium, a yeah. long reverb for each instrument. Like I've just got it all done mm. and I know my CPU will take it. Mm. Mm. Even with the plugins active, I don't yeah. care. I just have yeah. them on there. Yeah. And I'm like, yep, cool. <laughs> like, so yeah. I'm just not um, – um, I know that comes from a point of like – I've got that resource. I can do that, but I'm sure. not really conscious of, you know, somebody like a, a bedroom producer on their laptop. Mm. <laughs> the whole mm. thing would go up in flames or something totally. if they did that. They the wouldn't fan even just start. flies off because yeah. the computer flies away. I know. Yeah. So, like, that, that's why I was just curious. Like, yeah. is it a CPU thing or is it just a workflow thing? But for me, like, I'm just, yeah. you know, you, like, I'm even looking at getting a new M2 laptop just, mm. just because... I can and I yeah. can I can throw I can throw so much more at it. I'm like, well, then I can have yeah way more yeah yeah hundred percent. And it's and it's not because I need to use all of that. It's just because when I want it, rather it's there. It's there. I just yeah. I just I literally even have the sends already set up. I just yeah. bypass and unbypass it. Yeah. So it's like one click away from getting this one particular reverb or this one delay. One click, yep. it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. I lo- I like hearing that. And this is another great thing about doing this podcast is everyone has slightly different ways of doing things. And it's really interesting to me to just hear people's approaches and, you know, taking things from some people, taking things from other people. And yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's great that the way that you've explained that to make things easier for yourself and, you know, you have spent the time on going through those presets and, you know, making sure that the reverb sound is like a short tape delay or, a, yeah. you know, a medium, you know, reverb hall or whatever, you know, all those little things. It's not like you haven't 
sat there and done those and refined them and make them yeah, of course. better. It's still being creative, but you're just making your workflow in the mix session quicker. Oh, yeah. I reckon there's more bus channels than mm. there are audio channels in yeah. my session, <laughs> uh, if not double or triple. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like literally, even for yeah. printing out um, and exporting yeah. stems, I have that all. Yeah. On, but like, You've literally, got a great video on that on YouTube. I literally just like click a button. Mm. And all the stems from my mix, yeah. all the instrumental, the 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 no lead vocal, TV, everything just yeah. prints. That's something that I should, like, that I definitely like should. Set literally, up. if you want to talk about <laughs> saving time, and I just do, and, and like I'm like I can be recording. What is it? Like how many stems do I print out? Like maybe sixteen or eighteen stems plus all the other ones. I'm printing out like twenty one yeah. things all at one time, writing to the hard drive. Yeah, yeah, it's like. Well, it's so it's, much yeah. time saved and I don't have to charge clients for it. Mm. I used to have to charge clients to do stems mm. and it wasn't because I was like, I need to make a buck. It was mm. like, because shit, this is going to take me a lot of time mm. to yep. export each of these or route each of these. Even if I macroed and automated, it locked out the computer as this, whenever I'm printing my mix, I'm printing everything else. Mm. So it takes me four minutes. It takes mm. me exactly. And cli- I don't charge extra now for the clients. Yeah. The clients are like, shit, I'm getting a lot. It's huge. But I don't have to pay any extra. And I'm like, well, mm. I'm not going to charge you extra because it doesn't take me any more time. I'm just smart about the way I'm working now. Yeah. Yeah. So, love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks so much for listening so far. There is plenty more to come, so don't go anywhere. I just wanted to let you know that this podcast is made completely independently by myself with no sponsors. So if you like what you hear and you would like to show your support, you can send a donation to the PayPal link paypal.me slash what's that sound the link is also in the show notes thanks so much for your support and let's get back to it oh man well i mean i've i've found with in terms of um saving time for myself one of the the first things was you know saving my templates of you know mix effects they're called in studio one Mm -hmm. but it's a plug-in chain essentially and the way my brain works is i liken stuff that I'm working on to other stuff that I've worked on. So obviously I've been doing this for quite a long time now. I've gone been doing this for over 10 years and the amount of different artists that I've worked with, different styles of music, you know, even the way someone sings or anything like that, my mix templates are, are saved in order of folders, the artists that I've worked with and the songs that they've produced. So for example, if I'm like, mm, I loved that bass tone on, this song from this artist, I know exactly where to find it. Just drop and drag into my bass channel and it sounds like that bass. Oh, so okay. something like that is is great for me because of the amount of songs that I work on in different styles. I want to be able to have this different palette for a different artist. And even sometimes when it's like not even in the same genre, I'll try that, you know, that bass okay. channel. I'll be like, what does this sound like? I was like, cool. Yeah. Sounds like this. It works in this song for some reason. I'm going to use it. Oh, that's that's good. I'm I'm fucking lazy with that stuff. <laughs> like I've got everything set up, but then I'll still like manually yeah. dial stuff in. Not for anything, but what you've done takes time yeah. on the upfront. Yeah. For me, I'm like, I've done that in some areas, like with my vocal reverbs and... Um, yeah, that's about yeah. where it ends. That's like, that's yeah. like literally all I've like pre-set mm. up, whereas the rest of it is sort of like a... SSL channel strips everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then those channel strips have so much capability mm. to manipulate sound the way you need it. It's um, usually, it usually is a starting point, if I'm being honest. Yeah. For you, you, There's rarely a time where you dra- drag something in and it sounds exactly how you want it. Unless I'm using the same guitars that I've used with the other band. Yeah. Of course it's going to sound the same because it's the same guitar, the same input, the same plug and chain, nothing changes except maybe the input gain. Yeah. So there's only a little bit tweaking that I need to do to make sure it sounds the same. Um, the other thing that I've gotten into doing probably in the last year and a half is when I finish a session, I've got a, a workflow of how I not only export tracks, which you do in one click, which <laughs> but I do in in a few. It's not too, <laughs> it's not too much longer, but um, the other thing is, going through all of my plug-in chains um, that I've worked on on that song and that's when I save all those presets. Oh, it's at smart. the end of the song. Yeah, that's that's yeah. good. And then you got to – that's smart. Yeah. Because I like trying to think of like, oh, now I'm going to go through all these sessions. Oh, and do, yeah. Like, no, nah, forget about it. Yeah, no, um, don't do it in the moment unless I love that sound that I've got no, right then and I want to experiment again. 
Yeah, but even like now to go back and go th- like right. pull those sessions off the cloud and that. Okay. Yeah. No, From no. this <laughs> day forward, when I finish it before I archive, I can. Yeah. I can do that if I find something I like. It is. Um, it's actually, part, it is part of the archive process. Yeah. One sound I have. Go on. That is templated in. It's, it's fucking nice. Uh, Phil Collins, Tom Sound. Sick. I had that on. Yeah. That, that's in my yeah. template. So whenever I just want to, just like throw that on the toms, and uh, I yeah. probably overuse it. Oh, it's sick. It's, it sounds so good. I do it on a hip hop track. I'll do it on a jazz track. I'll do it on a metal track. I don't care. Yeah. And but then like some clients will be like, I love it. This mm. sounds good. And then some clients are like, Nick, what, what are you over, doing? Overkill, man. <laughs> yeah. But what, then, then you can just like mix it back a bit. And then no, no, like, I just like just mix delayed. it up all the way. I'm like, <laughs> you're going to hear this. And it's obnoxious as hell. And I shouldn't do it, but I just, I like the feel of it. And yeah. then you know, look, put it this way. At the end of the day, the client always gets the final say. But for, sure. for me, I'm like, I don't know. It's just, it's just such a fun sound. And yeah. it's so like, I use like micro shift yep. go, going going cool. into Valhalla mm-hmm. and then like, no, I limit the hell out of it. Add micro shift goes into Valhalla. And so then micro shift, do you pitch it down a bit? I don't pitch it down a bit. I just use the two and the three and it works like, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah just add extra depth to the yeah, just tonality like, of the, the yeah, toms it's, really. It's really weird. It's like, yeah. Then I'm like, okay, that's, that sounds weird. Oh, then I have a gate on it. Or oh, no, the gate's you on the reverb. You have to have the gate after no, the reverb. On, on the sure. reverb, the reverb is yeah. just super short and yeah. cuts off. Like it just. Yeah. 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 Love it. Love it. There's, I mean, for anyone that likes like alternative music and obviously might have heard of John Feldman, who's a producer, he's killing it. But he had a really interesting sound to probably his first five years of mixing, he had this really fucking bizarre drum sound and it was like iconic to his mixes. Okay. And he did a similar thing with his snare drums. This is what I've noticed. I don't know how officially he did it, but it was a thing where he sent the bottom snare mic to another um, uh, auxiliary track, Mm -hmm. cranked the ringy snare sound, like, you know, in a snare house, I mean, it's usually for organic snares. It's not like trap yeah. snares or anything. Yeah. Like, they're not going to have this. But a live snare will have some sort of ring yeah. because it's pitched a certain way. He would crank the shit out of that, chuck on a reverb and then gate the reverb, and that would be part of his snare sound. And you can hear it. It's like it's so bizarre, but it just somehow sounds really cool. So anyone that hasn't heard any of John Feld- Feldman's earlier stuff, like the used... Story of the Year's early album, um, stuff like that. You can hear that snare sound, so it's really fucking cool. So that's I've got one of them saved. It's it's good fun. I've used it on a recent track that you mastered, actually. But which uh, was that the Bitch Eyes one? No, Dust One. So it's a song called Overstayed. Yeah. How, 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 when did I do that? I think <laughs> I did that recently. It came out. It came out about a month or two ago, and you would have mastered it two months before that. So yeah, a while back. For in your <laughs> a while back for you because you work on so many tracks when mastering overstayed. Let me see where are we overstayed, Stu Watts. Yeah, okay. Oh wait, no, there was more. Oh, this was a whole EP, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, oh, fuck, yeah. Do I forget these. Things? <laughs> oh yeah. All right, cool. I don't know if we'll cut that or not. Maybe. Who well, knows? one question I have yeah. for you is, and I like to ask this of of I've asked this of a couple of guests that I've had on so far is. How do you avoid getting stuck in the weeds? Like how do you avoid those times where you want to experiment and you could spend, you know, like an hour or so on the one plug-in? Oh, I don't know. It's more intuition. Once Mm. I've got something up, I'll be like, oh, I'll throw this in and get this sounding to where I want it and Mm. I'll keep moving. I don't really get that stuck in the Mm. weeds. Yeah. I'm similar. And that's why I ask that question is I think, I think it is a thing that comes with time. I think like early on when you're first getting used to how you kind of picture things to sound but don't know how everything works, that's when obviously you have to spend a lot more time on like compression, EQ, figuring that sort of stuff out and you can tend to get stuck in the weeds. But I like my approach to, to, to things like that. If I'm noticing that I'm spending a bit more time on on something than I should, I just ask myself the question, stop and just go, what am I actually trying to do here? Because it's like, you can, you can, you can, I mean, I can, I can get stuck on something if I know the specific sound that I want and it like, and I'm not achieving it. I'm like, am I close? If the answer is like, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much there. I'll just move on. 
because it's something that when you get to the end of a mix, things will start sticking out to you. I find it might be different for you because you're getting the production mix a yeah. lot of the time. Yeah. Whereas a lot of time I'm starting at the start and finishing yeah. at the end. And then you're like sort of mixed in that process. Yeah. yeah. For, for me, like how do I put it? I'm I'm super decisive. Mm-hmm. I don't like to dwell on things. You mm-hmm. can't dwell on things in a mix because mm-hmm. then you just go down a rabbit hole. Like yep. you will get stuck in the weeds. So just be decisive. Mm-hmm. Put put onto paper something and commit to it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, don't send anything that you're not like. Don't send something back to a client if you're not happy with. It. If you're not happy with it, don't send it off. I don't send anything off unless somebody's unless I'd be happy with that person taking it and releasing it the next day. Mm-hmm. So I don't send a mix and be like, oh, here's mix one, but. Um, don't the snare's a bit the, off. Yeah, yeah, the snare's a bit off. <laughs> or here's, or here's yeah. mix two and I haven't gotten to the vote. Like, why That's is it in a mix? <laughs> like, just, yeah. just send them a final thing. Yeah. Not a final thing, but send them something that you'd be happy if they, they sent out to the world. Um, but m- m- what I'm trying to say is you've got to be decisive, mm. get something out to them, yep. okay, and then they'll, they're going to be focused on what they need to focus on as a client. If you could spend the first four hours trying to tweak the kick drum, and then you get notes back on the vocal. Yeah. It's like you just wasted yeah, all that time. Just, just get the kick drum sounding good. Yeah. Okay. It's sounding as good as you can. That doesn't mean that you should be negligent towards it. But focus on the whole thing. Get it to the client. The client's going to guide you. Mm. The client's going to go, well, I'm not liking this particular vocal or the way the snare sounds. And they're going to guide you through that process. Mm. You're just a vessel to help, mm. you know, collect, collect their ideas and put them to mm. paper. Mm. Um, I'm interested yeah. in how often you re- receive you know, pretty much raw mixes. Does that does that happen very often? Because, like, no. surely there's times where you have to spend a lot longer on something. Oh, actually, you know what? I lie. I lie. I do I, – I work with a Ukrainian artist, Aryan, on his latest album and with his mixes, and they actually come in raw where I'm doing dr- uh, uh, alignment, tuning, mm-hmm. editing. I'm doing – a bit more involved in those mm-hmm. projects. Um than any of my other ones. Mm -hmm. But with that said, he gets really good artists in really good studios, Mm -hmm. recorded very well, good performers. So I'm not really like, Mm -hmm. I'm never stuck in the weeds on it. It's like I I throw the drums up and everything's in time. Like, that's cool. And then I'm like, okay, well, I need to phase align these. And uh, what what plugin do I use? I can't even remember the name of the plugin. I think auto align. Yeah, I use auto align. That's right. Yeah. It, I've worked on it last year, so I haven't used. I literally haven't used auto align in a year. That yeah. shows you how much yeah. often I'm getting dry tracks or raw tracks. Yeah, but yeah. I, th- I throw that up. What's the percentage of like electronic music to non to like organic music, uh, for lack of a better term? Um, <laughs> for you, no, like for mixing, it's like it's like electronic where we're talking synthetically hip-hop, produced yeah, hip hop, yeah, pop, yeah, EDM, yeah, yeah. R and B, like ninety. Five to a yeah. hundred, like to five, yeah, yeah. out of yeah. the hundred, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I still do it, but it's just yeah, like yeah. not. It's just not your wheelhouse, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I just usually pawn that stuff out. I'm like, oh, yep, we'll get so and so to do it. Yeah, um, yeah, fair enough. But yeah, yeah. No, I think that I think it. I mean, even I notice from the electronic stuff that I do versus a rock band or just any any band that uses guitars and drums and bass and yeah there's a huge difference it's it's a massive difference to how <clears throat> i approach a mix or the the way that i dial in sounds and things like that it's it's vastly different because with you know like a guitar like even an acoustic guitar or something there's certain things that a, a mic will pick up that you just don't get from a synth or usually with electronic based music is it's like, it's perfect. The sounds are near perfect. And so there's a lot, it's more about very precise movements I've found with electronic music to try and get them into a place where it like, this feels great. It's very, very, I've just found it so different. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, time spent on, on different things. I, I, I find, I find. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a little thought I had there. Um, how do you know when a mix is done? How do I know when a mix is done? Mm. It's just done. I've just worked <laughs> through it. Like, what do you, like, this is like, how does a mix is, it's like, you got, you got two camps. You've got the person who, who spends like 15, 20 revisions. Like this is the mixing engineer going over and over and over and over and over. And it's mm. like, well, you, you're never going to know when it's done because you, 
you're never happy with. Then you got the other person who, like I said, they send off a mix and they're like, oh, the snare's not good. And I was like, why, why the fuck do you bother sending yeah. it over? Yep. Um, for me, I just work through it and if it's sounding good, mm. like I, I know that's a really generalised yeah. answer, but if you're getting paid to do this job, okay, and you've been doing it for any extent of time, yep. you should be able to use your intuition to be like, yeah, this is this is there. Yep. If you're still doubting yourself and asking like five years, six years into mm-hmm. your career, and and you're you're asking for money on the table for a client, but you don't even fucking know when you're done your job. Yeah, like what yep. the hell? Do a different career. Go become an accountant. Yeah, like seriously. And then yeah, yeah. I understand like analysis paralysis is a thing that sort of like goes into people's mind and they mm-hmm. get they get stressed. They they feel they're getting judged and but like that comes with that comes with the job. You you mm-hmm. have to be able to cop that criticism on the chin, but back your decisions and be like, okay, yeah. I did these decisions. I made these mixed decisions. I back them. If client knocks back at it, okay, cool. They're the client. They're paying the bill. Let me understand what what perspective they're coming from, and then we move forward. Not that you never send anything off, or you spend three days working on one chorus. It's like, mm, yeah, you, you you won't get anywhere yeah. doing that. The 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 approach that I have is is mix, fix, repeat. That's how I look at things. And then when you get to a point where it's like, don't need to fix anything. That to me is when it when a when a mix is done. Yeah, and and like you said, it, intuition. It's a, it's a difficult thing theoretically because it comes with time. It can only come with time and the amount of stuff that you work on. This is what a lot of the conversations that I have with newer people that are newer to the thing, they tend to spend so long on one song or an EP. They'll spend a year or two getting this perfect thing right. It's like do more. Yeah. More output leads to, leads to intuition. Yeah, I agree with that. But then there's also like, I know I've been in the position when I was earlier on mm. and every other engineer is in the position because as soon as I bring something up when they send me a mix for feedback, they go, yeah, I know. And the yeah, I know sort of pisses me off because they'll send out a mix knowing there's something a little bit wrong with the vocal. Like in their gut, they know this vocal mm. isn't quite, it's not quite hitting. It's not quite hitting. They still yeah. send it off because they try and mask it. It's like, it's like just throwing glitter on shit. They're like, we know this vocal isn't working quite right, but we're going to add a compressor, we're going to parallel compressor, we're going to add this, add this, do this to the drums, do this to the bass, side chain, this crap, the other. Mm -hmm. But at the heart of it, they know that that vocal isn't quite right Mm -hmm. because of one thing or another. Mm -hmm. You're better off just trying to figure out how to make that vocal sound on its own as Mm -hmm. fucking good as possible, not fucking throwing it in glitter. Even if that means going, do we have other takes we can we can pull in here? Because mm. this particular this uh, this particular note when, on the proximity effect of the vocal, it becomes a bit boomy and then when we use a dynamic EQ, it becomes a bit thin. How, how, how can you better approach that rather than just, you know? Here's the other thing, re-record it. Yeah, of, uh, yeah <laughs> there, there's that. But then you, I you've know got, there's times where it's there, not There's possible. times where it's not possible, but focus rather than on trying to mask it. Yeah. Like, just get the, don't send it off if you know it's not yeah. it's not good or don't yeah. spend time doing other shit if you know your vocal's still not in the right spot or your kick or your snare or whatever get that right and you know that's where it's worth spending some time on and getting in the weeds so to speak yeah and the other thing is ask you ask people that know the answer to it i yeah. like again it's it's just something that i think people are scared to do because they're they've got this fear that people are going to judge them or they're going to think that they're not good at it. It's like, well, at this point in time, you aren't good at what you're trying to achieve. So ask for people that know what they're doing to give you a bit of feedback. Yeah. And wait a second. You're always going to get judged on your work. Your client, you send something off, they're going to judge you on it. So it's not a fear of being judged. You have to accept you're being judged. And then when you accept you're being judged, then you're like, okay, I'll take on that feedback. I'll learn from it. I'll make, I'll, I'll improve for the next time. Mm-hmm. This uh, this so oh, I seen in the floor. It fucking pisses <laughs> me off. People can, I've, I've got him riled up. No, because what happens is like they'll go, "Oh, my client sent me these notes." God, you know this this client doesn't know what they're talking about. They sent me like you see him before, and I'm like, "Are they paying you?" Like. I know there's some there, 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 there's sometimes you can have like a bit of a difference in in personality or the way mm. people come across or whatnot. And I'm not there to judge that mm, or say mm. that you know. I'm not trying to justify if ever a client's rude or mm. left a field in that sense. But at the end of the day, they're giving you feedback mm. to help you create the best product you mm. can for mm. them. You should be like, yeah. thank you for giving me this no. feedback. Thank you so much for for yeah. shitting on my mix because now I can make it better. But instead, they're the opposite. They're like, oh, I'm gonna go cry on a Facebook group and yeah, yeah. bitch and moan. And I've 
and this is so interesting to me because I've never had that experience. Yeah. I've never once had someone tell me that like my stuff sucks. I've just, yeah. I mean, I've just not had it because I'm open to receiving feedback. I want to do what's best for the song. I've had it. I've yeah. had somebody like completely, you destroyed my EP. Yeah. You know what it was? Go on. It was, it was a mastering job. Right. The producer sent across the wrong mixes. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I knew something had went wrong. I knew something had went wrong, and I'm like, and I got them on the phone. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, exactly what's happened. I respect the fact that you know, like, you you feel this way because you spent a shit ton of fucking money getting yeah, this yeah. production, good producer, everything. Um, done it. Just, just give me a day. Let me get to the bottom of this. Yeah. And I call the producer. I'm not going to say names, and I'm like, yeah. hey, this is a situation. Yeah. Um, and he's like, that's really weird. I wouldn't, like we've worked with together. So many times yeah. and never this has happened. Yeah. Let me have a listen. Oh, I mm -hmm. sent you the wrong mixes. Those are like the demo ones or whatnot. I'm like, oh, thanks, mate. So yeah. then I got on the phone. I go, leave this with me. Oh, I've, I've spoken to the producer. They're going to send me something. Leave it with me a day. Yeah. Complete 180 like that. Yeah. So it has happened. But if, if I had instead, if instead of calling the client to actually communicate and discuss yep. with them, if I just went on a Facebook group and be like, this client's yeah. a fucking bitch and <laughs> this is like, what, the, what would have been achieved? Yeah. I would have, would have pissed off a client. I would have looked like a dickhead online. Yep. And then and then at the end of it, I don't even know what's gone wrong. Yeah. I haven't learned anything. So I just, <laughs> like, it has happened to me. It has happened to me. That's great. So it was, a, it was a funny story. story. I was like. My my, what do they call you? Your heart's in your throat. Like, yeah, like yeah. I've never seen this, and I felt so bad. But yeah, no, yeah, I figured yeah. it out. But anything else you want to mention on, um, you know, setting up and the actual workflow? I've been pretty blunt with what I've said. I think people can understand my sort of thing. Like, you know, get it in, do the work, be yeah. happy with it, get it back out, and accept you're going to be judged, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about you? I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I think. I think I've said it so many times already. It just comes back to communication. Mm -hmm. the, 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 these are just the, the problems that most people have can be avoided with good communication. And like you said, not blaming other people for your own. Take responsibility for your own shit. If you fucked up, say I fucked up. Mm. That, uh, it's just it, does, it makes so much sense to me for that to be the answer. So I think, yeah, good communication. And that leads us to after you've finished a mix, you've done revisions, all those sorts of things, then it's the feedback stage. Usually how does that kind of come to you? How, do, how does feedback on a mix or, or a master come back to you? In an email? Yep. All in an email. Um, sometimes I get like 50 bloody emails mm -hmm. in a row and like it's like, okay, uh, there's a lot to digest here and then like half of them are like conflicting notes and you're like, okay, there's even more to digest here. Mm -hmm. And at that point I didn't do anything. I'm like, okay, let's get on a call. We'll go through it all. I write mm -hmm. minutes for the call, send it back. Is this what we spoke about? Is this what you want me to do? They're like, yeah, mm -hmm. cool. I'll act on that. Then when I send it back, I go, I did X, Y, Z. I mm -hmm. addressed this note, this note, this note, this note, this note. This is how I did each one. Mm -hmm. And then send it off. Whereas if I get 50 emails and I start working in a linear fashion from one email to the next to the next to the drummer's email to the bassist to the vocalist, mm -hmm. whatever, um, half of them make sense because mm -hmm. they're all connected. Mm -hmm. And then some of them's like, I want the vocal up. And then other ones, mm -hmm. I want the vocal down. Mm -hmm. I want the kick up. I want the kick. It's mm -hmm. like, so no, 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 no. Let's get on a call. Mm -hmm. Let's hash it out before I touch anything. Yep. yep. I've got a, um, this is slightly back to the revisions thing, but I've got a mixed notes spreadsheet that I've got set up for people. I saw this, I got this off uh, Eric Valentine. He's an amazing producer. He's done some amazing stuff and he's got a great YouTube channel. He's worked with like Third Eye Blind, Smash Mouth, Weezer, huge bands, huge rock bands. Yep. Um, and essentially the mix notes spreadsheet is the song, the yep. version, because you can send multiple versions. Yeah. Timestamp, uh -huh. the client's comment, uh -huh. and then my action taken. And when I've finished a mix, I'll send it to them. I'll say, please enter in into this spreadsheet your notes. And it, it's all as clear as possibly can be. If the comment doesn't make sense, like as if that bit of mix note doesn't make sense, for example, uh, you know, like you said, one person might say I want it up and the other person might say I want it down. 
then it's just a matter of you've got two two conflicting things here. I, I just put in my in my comment, you need, you know, tell me, tell me what 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 I've done what I think is the appropriate move here. If it needs fixing, let's fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That works. It just makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to spreadsheet, I'm always it's like I feel like I'm in a primary school room again yeah. learning computers. Have uh, so they interact with the same spreadsheet you're yes. interacting with? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's just all on Google Sheets. Oh. Yeah. Cool. It's just uh, it, it just elimina- to me that's an elimination of friction like that we were talking okay. about at the start. So it's like give me the notes, all good to go. If you're happy with the mix, that's it. Yeah, that's And it's sent off to mastering. <laughs> that seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. That seems pretty cool. And then, you know, I think the thing there is like you have the opportunity at any time for the feedback to be given. It's like there to me, and it hasn't happened yet. There's no time where at the end of the the mix where it's like, this is not what I wanted. Yeah, you know, and so there hasn't been a time where I've given. There's there's only been one or two times where I've done a trial mix for someone, or I've done a mix for someone. They pay me for it, and they're like, this is not what I'm after. I'm going to go with someone else, and that's only happened like once or twice, and that was pretty clearly communicated. It's like you're not what I'm looking for. I'm going to go with. Someone. And it's like I'm yeah. like cool. Fine. I, I want you to get the best outcome for your song. If I'm not the right person, it's totally fine. You know, I don't, you know, I don't need that job. I'm not going to beg you back for it. But for, you know, every other instance, there's not been a time where I've been like, that mix sucks. I'm not happy with it. Yeah. It's because of that process that I got set up. So Yeah, no, fair enough. For me, that's how I like to, uh, to do that end of the, end of the job area. Yeah. Have you... You've had surely had times where you don't agree with the feedback you've been given. Yeah, but yeah, um, that's a pretty open-ended question. <laughs> how, how does that look? How does that look? Um, ah, oh. depends what I'm not agreeing with. I like I said, I always send off a mix that I'm happy with. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, this sounds good. Mm-hmm. I'd be happy to release it. Mm-hmm. Typically, that also means my mixes are. Tight in a sense where if somebody wants to change things, Mm -hmm. unless it's like, can you bring up the bass 10 decibels? I have a lot of freedom to bring things up and down and move Mm -hmm. things around because the the core structure of it and Mm -hmm. the way things are interacting, things won't fall apart very quickly until Mm -hmm. you really fuck with Mm -hmm. it. So if somebody's like, I want to bring the bass down, I'm like, oh, I wouldn't bring the bass down. I don't tell them that, but I'm like... I can do it mm. and it's still going to sound good because I know that the low end, you know, the kick is in its own space. It's still got enough end. Like it, the mixes yeah. are in a space where if people ask me to do things that which I might not agree on. Now, if 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 I think it's like a You're absolute ruin bruise, this mix. Like, gonna, <laughs> not even the mix but the song because I know the mix is – Sure. I won't ever send out a mix that is ruined or I'm not agreeing with. But if I think the song is going to like negatively be impacted mm-hmm. in, a, in a really like really bad way, mm. then I'll say, hey – I know you're looking to do this. I know you're considering this Mm. Um, because typically clients are very micro on their notes. Mm -hmm. They're very this bass, Mm -hmm. this vocal, Mm -hmm. this snare. Mm -hmm. They're they're very much, they they do listen to the big picture, but when it comes to articulating that to um, the engineer, they usually specify individual elements, Mm -hmm. which is good because it's objective in a way. And they do that because they want to, be constructive to the process to be like, well, if I talk like an engineer, Mm. if I communicate like an engineer, they'll understand it better and I'm going to get a better result. Mm -hmm. So they'll like sort of in their own mind calculate, Mm. oh, the chorus, so this is is the client's brain. Thinking, yep. Um, The chorus doesn't sound as big as it could. Mm -hmm. What could I suggest we do? They Mm. don't consult the engineer. They just, this is this internal sort of dialogue. And they're like, oh, maybe if... um, the guitars had more low end in it and yeah. I suggest that to the engineer, I'll get a bigger mix back. Yeah. So instead of going to the engineer, this chorus isn't sounding isn't as hitting, big, yeah. is, isn't hitting, mm. they'll create this note mm. in their brain, mm. send it to the engineer, mm. the engineer will do it and well, I'll do it or then I engineer will do it. That's not the point but like um, and then they sort of push themselves into a corner where they're like, oh, this is the thing, this is the guitar. The, we made the guitar bigger, the chorus isn't bigger. So the guitar even has to be bigger than that, yeah. and, then, and then and then they and then they they do that, and, and, and so in, it, again, like you said, communication is important. If, if instead they were like, the chorus isn't hitting quite right, mm. let's brainstorm, let's think of some mm. ideas, mm. Oh, because you know, and then yeah, 
Yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Yep. No, it's fair. It's good, man. Yeah. Well, I think we start to wrap this up unless you got any other points on uh, the overall mix process, anything that we've mix- missed, how you can make your life easier, more efficient for both parties. Yeah, I, th- I think it's just a confidence it, that both parties bring to the table. Yeah. If the engineer is confident and competent as well, that's important. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You can't have an incompetent engineer. If the engineer is confident and competent in what they're doing mm-hmm. and the artist is confident in that engineer mm-hmm. and that communication is solid, mm-hmm. well, then you're going to have an insanely good project. Mm-hmm. If either pa- if, if any of those like four factors, so, so the confidence in both the engineer and the client and the competency of the engineer or the communication breaks down, if any of those four things break down, the project's fucked. It's like yeah. game over. Like there, there's going to be things that are going to go askew. Yeah, 100%. Love it. Great point. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining me, man. No um, thank you all for listening or watching. Um, would be awesome if you could follow or subscribe on the platform that you are listening to or watching this on and share it on your socials. That goes a long way. It just gets the word out to, to more people. Um, really appreciative of your time listening to this. Thank you again, Nick. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will see you next time on What's That Sound Podcast. Thanks for listening to What's That Sound. Make sure you hit follow or subscribe on your podcast platform to stay up to date with each new episode. We'll catch you next time.